let's let's take it away. Grant. It's always wise to clap before something starts. So then if you think it's rubbish, you've got your like clapping out of the way. Um, lovely to meet you all. I'm Isaac. Um, I graduated here a couple of years ago. Um, I now am a teacher assistant. I work in pastoral care um, in a secondary school in Oxford. And today we're going to be discussing religion and drugs. There's a nice picture of Adam and Eve taking some shrooms. Um, yeah, that's an interesting. And yeah, just a few things to talk about before we start. Um, I'm not an academic. Um, most of what we're going to be talking about today is from my own personal experience and the personal experience of people I know and of others. So I'm not, I'm not an intellectual. Feel free to, this is, the Q&A is going to be really useful for this. If you have lots of arguments, just talk, tell me. I'll be interested to hear what you have to say. Another thing to say is my experience of drugs. I have less of a really good inside knowledge to psychedelics. And it's worth just putting that out there, because I know lots of people are really into psychedelics, and I want to be respectful uh, to that movement, to that community, um, and be just, you know, be, be honest that I don't know a huge amount about it. I do know a bit, I do have some experience, um, but yeah, I want to be respectful of that. Um, the second thing to say is this is a really big topic. Like, if you go online and Google Jesus and drugs, so much stuff will come out, like so, so much. Um, there's an Ethiopian group who believe that every time a cloud is mentioned in the Bible, that's everyone smoking up. That's everyone just, yeah, doing some weed. Um, there's a group which says Jesus is a magic mushroom, but it, Christianity was an early magic mushroom cult. Um, so there's like a load of things we can talk about, and I'm not going to get into loads of detail because there's only certain things we can focus on. The main aim of my talk is going to be, if you're interested in doing drugs, or you are doing drugs, you should at least be interested in what Jesus has to offer. Um, that the needs, the wants that drugs promise to fulfill are actually fulfilled better in Jesus. And so by the end of this talk, I would love you not to walk out a full Christian, but just to think, in my search for truth, in my search for meaning, does Jesus have anything to offer? Great. So we're going to start basically with some reasons we do drugs. And the first reason is obvious. We do drugs because they're fun, they're enjoyable. I'm not going to pretend drugs aren't enjoyable. They're very enjoyable. Like, so, like, that's obviously a big reason why we do drugs, if you do drugs. But, like, that's a big driving force. And I'm not going to, we're going to get into some deeper stuff, but I'm not going to beat around the bush. That's obviously a major push for why we do drugs. But I don't think it's the only reason we do drugs. Um, hopefully this works. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. So I think three of the main reasons I kind of thought of of doing drugs and why we do them and reasons which are very personal for me, as we'll get into, um, were escape, transcendence and truth, and satisfaction. Um, realities for people who ha can't handle drugs, is a quote by Tom Waits. That quote's been attributed to lots of people. But I do think that's a big push for drugs, especially certain kinds of drugs, and um, alcohol as well, I think. Um, basically, the idea that reality is hard. Reality is really difficult. There are things in life we'd rather avoid. And so we escape reality with drugs. Um, that could be a whole load of things. That could just be you know, physical pain or difficult life circumstances. It could be more existential things. I know so many people, especially young guys actually, um, who are bored, who lack purpose, who lack meaning, who lack value. So you just get high every day. They smoke weed every day, play video games. And it's, yeah, be really quite sad. A lot of wasted potential. Um, and it might even be escape from ourselves. Um, yeah, I thought it was going to be a bit deeper. But um, for myself, I wanted to get high because I didn't, like my own company sometimes. Sometimes I just wanted to get out of my own head. Because being in your own head is a scary place sometimes to be. So that desire for escape can be a really big push towards drugs. Now that's kind of like, that's the negative side, I'd say. Like that's like why we do drugs, like to escape bad stuff. But there's much more positive reasons someone might want to do drugs as well. So the search for transcendence and the search for truth. Yeah, I think, you know, this is particularly true for the psychedelic community. Um, it's we're looking for something deeper. We don't, it's not that we're trying to escape reality, but we're looking for a higher reality, a better reality. Um, if the first one was going, life is too hard, I don't want to deal with it. The second one's going, I think life can be better. I think there can be more to life. I think there's something beyond the physical realm which will make more sense of my life. It's a search for meaning. It's a yeah, search for truth. So you know, people will do MDA or they'll do shrooms or they'll do acid to get a new perspective, to gain some secret knowledge to see the world in a new light. The last reason 
I've, there's obviously lots of reasons we do, do drugs, but this is one of the main ones. It's, I think satisfaction. I think that's a really big one. We're all searching for happiness. We all want to live fulfilling, satisfied lives. And drugs promise that. That might be a small thing. That might be, you know, I smoke weed because it helps my anxiety. It might be I do acid or DMT because I want to find more meaning in my life. I want to find truth. Um, I want to connect with the eternal consciousness or oneness or the eternal being, all that sort of stuff. Um, and to be honest, drugs do a pretty good job. I'm not gonna, like, there's lots of evidence that drugs do lead to a lot of satisfaction. People who have PTSD and depression, it's, clinical trials have shown that shrooms and um, ecstasy do a really good job with lots of those things. They are actually very helpful cures for lots of those things. Um, and lots of people would say that their lives have been massively improved by doing psychedelics um, in particular, but other drugs as well. Um, and that people feel happier as a result. So the question is then, if that's the case, if these things aren't just really evil, awful things which will kill you, um, why be interested in Christianity? Lots of people are finding their meaning, their spirituality in things like the psychedelic. Um, and basically, I'm going to say Christianity is better. And you might disagree with me, that's fine. But I think Christianity is better. And the reason I think Christianity is better is I ultimately think drugs might give you some insight, they might give you some sense of the world, they might give you some perspective. But I don't think it is really tapping into eternal reality. And I think eternal reality is Jesus. And I think what we're ultimately meant for is relationship with Jesus. That is where our needs are truly met. So yeah, this is, so this is talking about how Christianity, what Christianity has to offer. Um, and talking about escape one first. The escape, the escape desire for drugs, I think, is largely to do with um, life being hard and wanting to make life easier. I think Christianity doesn't do that. I don't think Christianity makes your life easier. However, I think Christianity is a means by which we can grapple with some of the hardnesses of reality, some of the difficulties of reality, and be honest about them, but also have the capacity to confront them. And I think this is really seen in, in Jesus. Um, if I go on to the next one. Jesus understands what suffering is like. As a human, Jesus experienced suffering. And we have, there's so much in the Bible of talking about Jesus' compassion of those in suffering. And this is the whole idea of crucifixion and redemption, crucifixion and resurrection. Jesus dies, he experiences suffering, but he's also resurrected. And in that, we get a sense that if we have relationship with Jesus, he understands our suffering, but he also offers hope for redemption. Now, you might think, oh, that's just some like, opiate of the people, or that's just, oh, I'm putting all our hopes on heaven. But the idea that we could have a relationship with someone who knows us deeply, who knows our pain, who knows our suffering, and can redeem it, and also provides us meaning in our suffering. He says our suffering is not pointless. He says our suffering serves a goal. And all that stuff about us, the meaningless we often feel, we want to escape. I do think Christianity does provide that. Because Jesus says to you, your decisions do have consequences. You have use. Those guys who are in their rooms getting high every night because they don't think they've got anything to offer to the world. God says to them, I, I basically want you on my side. I want you to build my kingdom. I want you to join me in my enterprise. And I've got good work for you to do. Um, the next one is truth. I think this is a really interesting one. So Jesus says very famously, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I think psychedelics get onto something really important, that there is more to reality than the physical. There is a transcendent. But Christianity says the ultimate transcendent, the ultimate spiritual being, the ultimate force behind everything is, is Christ, is Jesus. Um, there's this stuff about how the whole of creation was created through Jesus and for Jesus. He's the beginning of creation and the end. He's its purpose, its driving force, the ultimate reality underneath everything. And I think that's a really important thing because it says, as much as the world might not seem like it, at the center of reality is a loving, self-sacrificial person, a person who we can have relationship with, a person who we can connect with. And there's lots of stuff, especially in John's Gospel, which I really encourage. If you're doing psychedelics, I really encourage you to read John's Gospel. You have a great time. Um, but like, basically, um, there's a lot of stuff about Jesus revealing God, the nature of God. What is God like? And the ultimate way he reveals that is on the cross through his self-sacrificial death, his loving self-sacrificial death. So if we want to see God, if you want to see the true God, we don't need to do a drug or try and tap into the one eternal consciousness. We need to look at Jesus. That's what Christianity is saying. But this man actually represents Jesus fully. He is God and he shows us what God is like. So that is where we can actually find truth. Um, yeah, and to, to have a relationship with him is to touch the deepest reality of the world. 
Last one, satisfaction. So Augustine was an African bishop and he said, our hearts are made for God and we are restless until we find our rest in him. Um, and Jesus said something very similar. He said, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Jesus offered um, this woman living water, water that would brim up within her to eternal life. So Christianity is basically saying what you're desiring, what you want in reality is ultimately God. You might not realize it, but that is ultimately what we all want. We don't want it because we don't like God, but we do, some, we do desire something more. And that desire for something more, which we might look for psychedelics for, we can actually find in Jesus. And the reason is that we are created for Jesus and God offers in Christ a loving relationship with himself. He offers love, forgiveness, friendship. It's a really important thing. Um, the first time I did ecstasy, I did a bit of research. And I wanted to find out, basically, if it was safe and all that sort of stuff. And a friend of mine gave me this article. And it was really annoying. I basically, when I was researching this, I looked like far and wide to try and find this article. I couldn't find it. It was basically someone explaining what ecstasy felt like. And they basically said, uh, this is like almost verbatim, I, I found it really hilarious. Um, it's like being in the presence of God, being fully known as his loved child, completely secure and safe, right? Like that's pretty much worth, I can't remember, I, obviously this was a few years ago, but like that's what I remember of it. And if you're a Christian in this room, you might be finding that funny because I've heard a million Christians use almost exactly the same words to describe Christianity. Now, I'm not saying Christianity is like constantly pinging or constantly being up. It's not just some big trip and it won't make you feel happy yet forever. But the idea that maybe when we're doing MDA or doing MDMA, we are searching for that connection, for that relationship. And that relationship might actually be found in God who becomes our father when we become his children. But that desire can actually be met. But it's not just a temporary experience we can have for an hour or a few minutes, but that can be a reality for us. Okay. We'll come, we've got a few more things to say. We'll come to the end pretty soon. Um, first thing to say, I think gee, you might be sitting there and going, well, that's kind of cool or that sounds attractive. You might be thinking, this is just a load of rubbish, fair enough. But if you do find this interesting and attractive, you might also be thinking, but I can't really be religious or Jesus isn't for me or I'm not even good enough. And, then, and sometimes there is a lot of shame and guilt associated with drugs. Um, if that's you, I just want to say, like, Jesus is exactly the person for you because that's exactly who Jesus spent most, most of his life with, his earthly ministry. Jesus hung out with the people who everyone else would have said. They're not the religious ones. They're the people you would like, be out, outside of society kind of people. So if you feel like Christianity couldn't be for you, I'd really encourage you, look at the person of Jesus because he is very much, he's very much not that kind of person. He's a person who really loves people and loves people in every situation. That's all kind of good in theory, but I think it's probably worth putting some meat on it. And I'm going to talk about my own experiences, my own story, and hopefully I'll be useful. I'm going to put a picture up on the board. Um, this, I can't really see it very well because of the light, but anyway, you can try and just about see it. But it's a, after, look, at, look it up afterwards, it's an amazing photo, um, um, painting. It's by Rembrandt, it's called The Return of the Prodigal Son. And this painting is my, my favourite painting of all time. And I just think, um, yeah, maybe meditate on it and think of it while I talk about my life and some of my experiences. And just, I think this is, yeah, it's such a beautiful image and it captures so much of what Christianity is about. So, yeah, I'm, I wasn't always a Christian. I became Christian about three years ago, now, maybe more. Um, and before I was a Christian, I did a lot of drugs. Um, I smoked a lot of weed, mainly. I did other stuff as well, but like, for me, I just, I just loved weed. Weed was amazing. I just loved getting high all the time. Um, and yeah, and I think I started it for the reasons we kind of talked about. I started it because it was fun. My friend was like, oh, I smoked some weed. I was like, yeah, cool. And, but then I think as I went on in life, it started to be more of an escape. It did start to become more of an escape. It became a I have social anxiety, or I feel low, or I have low value, or like it was a big social thing as well. Um, like it's just easier to hang out with people if everyone's high. Like it's just much easier. So I just smoked weed, and that was it was kind of more of the escape side. But as I got a bit older, I think drugs stopped being of an escape and more of a search for truth, and I started to do other drugs as well. And it was part of a more general, genuine, general, genuine search for truth. I think so. I started to think of what is my life about? What's my purpose? And smoking and meditation, they were big parts of searching for truth. I think during that time, I probably went to use philosophical terms from being a materialist to an idealist. I went from seeing the world as just stuff to that actually being ideals which were good and valuable. And I started to think a lot about these ideals or principles 
and how great they were. I talked thought about the principles and virtues of compassion and love and friendship and being self-sacrificial and justice. And these ideals really captured me. I thought they were beautiful. And in one sense, I think I was probably worshipping them in, in a way. They were kind of the things I aspired to and I wanted to embody. And friendship was such a huge part of that. Friendship was basically the key, I think. And it's one of the big reasons I did drugs was that allowed me to, it was a social thing. It was having friendship with other people, finding community, finding a position where I could be high and therefore have lots of my self exposed. I didn't have all my guarded um, mask up. I was more honest, more vulnerable, and people would still love me and still be my friend. So that's one of the reasons I found drugs really attractive. At the same time, in the sort of search for truth and f looking for these virtues and looking for these values, I also was thinking about God. I was like, I wonder if God exists. I come from a, a Christian background, but I was basically worried he existed. I didn't want him to exist because if he existed, then I'd have to stop smoking weed and I'd start, stop having to watch pornography and all those sorts of things. I just, I didn't want to. I wanted to carry on living my life. I wanted to carry on being God. Um, and I think, but I was like, well, if this is true, truth matters and I do need to pursue this if it's true. I can't just ignore it. I think I became more intellectually honest as I got older and when I need to, if this is true, I need to believe it. So I kind of prayed and said, God, I don't really want you to be there, but if you are, show yourself, show up. Expecting nothing to happen at all. Didn't expect anything to happen. But as I prayed that, I started just showing more of an interest, but nothing really happened for quite a while. I just kept on praying, kept on praying. And then one night, um, I had basically quite a, quite a strong encounter with the person of Jesus. Now, it's worth saying, I'd smoked some weed earlier that, <laughs> earlier that day. And if you want to dismiss this and go, oh, he was high, it wasn't genuine, fair enough, you can do that. I, don't, I, I can see why you would do that. It's worth saying, I smoked weed pretty much all the time, so I kind of knew what weed was like. And it's, yeah, like, weed's not going to, like, blow your brains out. It's pretty, pretty mild stuff. Like, it's not that crazy. Um, so... But I, I had, I, so I went upstairs and I basically had, had smoked a bit a few hours beforehand, was sobering up. And I just started to pray. And I basically went, Jesus, if you're there, show yourself, show up. And I was uncertain whether I talk about this because it's a bit weird and it might confuse you, but I think it's worth talking about because it's what happened. And I want to be honest. These words came into my head saying, if there's anything evil or dark in you, you should ask Jesus to make it go away. And I was like, whoa, that is so weird. That is so bizarre. Like, I would never think something like that. It very much felt like someone else was telling me to say this. And I was like, this is so weird. But I feel like I had to say it. I feel like I had to say, if there's anything like evil in me, I, I should just ask it to go away. So I did, and I prayed that. And in, a, in that moment, I had this incredible sense of relief, like this rushing sensation through me. If I was to equate it to drugs, it would be like the experience of ecstasy, um, but from nothing to, ever, to being fully, I mean, it was completely different to that, but I just want to give that to show the severity of it and the, 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 the sudden move that was, that was going on there. Um, and I said this incredible sense of Jesus' pre presence, that he loved me, that he wanted to forgive me, that he had compassion on me in all the difficulties and suffering I had, um, that the idea that God hated me, even though I'd done a lot of messed up stuff, you know, I'm not this perfect person, I know a lot of bad things, but he wanted to forgive me. He wanted to have a relationship with me. He wanted to pursue me with love. And in that moment, I just remember saying again and again, Jesus, all I want is you. All I want is you. And this is someone who like, really was, had some very negative feelings towards Christianity at this time. And I realized in that moment that Jesus was compassionate. He was loving. He did offer friendship. He did offer reality and truth and beauty. And I remember so clearly thinking, Jesus isn't just one example of a compassionate person or one example of a loving person. He is compassion. He is love. He is forgiveness. He is friendship. All those values and virtues find their full and proper instantiation and source in Christ. But it's not just that he's an idea. It's not just he's this metaphor for the perfect person. He was a real human being I could have a relationship with and wanted to have a relationship with me and wanted to bring me into a reconciled relationship with him. Okay, that's the end of the talk. I think it's worth asking, where does this leave us? You might go, well, that's good for you, Isaac, or that sounds cool, or whatever, but why should I be interested in it? Or is it even true? Who cares? All that sort of stuff. I'm not going to, I'm not, I think it is true, I think there's good reasons for believing it's true. I'm not going to tell you why I think it's true, because we don't have time, and it's not the point of this talk. But my main aim is, if you are thinking, if you're searching for meaning, if you're searching for value, have a think about Jesus. 
Lots of people have found their meaning and value in Jesus. Lots of people who did used to do psychedelics now spend their time praising Jesus. Um, the claims of Christianity are too big to ignore, and it's worth thinking about. I'd really encourage you, do what I did, pray. There's no, there's no harm in going, God, if you're about to show yourself. What's the worst that can happen? Um, read an account of Jesus' life. Read John's Gospel. John's Gospel is amazing. But like, if you want to read the Bible with anyone, I promise you, I 100% guarantee you, that someone will read it with you. I will, or someone else will. I'd happily chat to you more about it. Um, yes, but I want, to just think, I want to raise the potential that there is a deeper, more meaningful, more powerful spiritual reality out there. And that spiritual reality, you might be searching for that reality. And maybe that reality is searching for you and that it's worth pursuing. There you go. That's my talk. Uh, time for questions.